Hello friends. Welcome to the Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto fell in the love with powerful Wonder Woman in the World of Justice League. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video. Naruto forced his chakra higher and higher. He didn't bother once to stop and rest. This is his chance. I have you now. I will show you the truth and make you pay you masked freak. Naruto vanished in a golden flash and reappeared behind his spiral masked foe. Madara Uchiha, as he called himself now, activated his power and teleported away from his attack in a swirl. He reappeared with an attack of his own. Trusting his hands forward, Madara shot a stab of rock at him. Naruto crushed the incoming attack with a golden claw hand, and he rushed at him again. He quickly formed a clone and brought his hands to his side. Placing the negative to the side and the positive to the other, Naruto added his own chakra into Misk and slammed it forward. Madara didn't teleport this time. He sidestepped, and he kicked Naruto in the back of the head. Naruto went rolling down and impacted the ground with his Rasengan. The ground shock and erupted in a shower of debris. Madara stood on top of a branch as he looked down at him. He calmly jumped down with his huge fan now in his hand and waved it down at him. A tornado of dirt, grass, and trees formed from the fan. Naruto looked startled and tried to pull away but couldn't really. The force of the whirlwind pulled him in and spun him until he reached the top and was catapulted away. Madara quickly took advantage of his flying form and teleported next to Naruto with a black rod in hand. He stabbed forward and penetrated Naruto's skin right to his heart. Goo, Naruto choked and coughed. Looking up, Naruto smiled at Madara. It was then Madara realized what happened. He tried to turn around but found Naruto's grip on him. Let go, Madara ordered. We'll both die. Naruto shook his head. No, the voice said from behind. It was Naruto but one with six Rasengans around him. You're dead. Rasengan Barrage, Madara was nailed onto each one of his limbs and blasted down to the ground in a spurl. Naruto fell back down on a tree and stood there looking at Madara's fallen form with fatigue overriding his body. When Madara didn't move anymore Naruto was pleased that he has won. I don't think so, Madara said from behind him. Naruto quickly turned around but was too late. Madara slammed him head first into the ground and stabbed him in the stomach. Goo. Naruto spat out. You have been a challenge Uzumaki Naruto. But you have lost. You don't have any chakra left. I can tell, my Rinnegan has told me. Any more and you lose yourself. Give up now. Naruto grunted out, shut up. I'm tired of you, and, I'm not going to lose. I'm going to kick your ass. Madara's eyes narrowed. Pity. He grabbed two more black rods and stabbed them into Naruto's hands. Now to drag you back, and to complete my plan. No, Naruto said immediately after him. Even with the pain, Naruto followed after again. No I won't let anyone down. I won't give up. I will win, because I am going to be the next Hokage and bring peace. Naruto's form erupted into a blazing orange chakra. The positive chakra Naruto managed to grab from the Kiyubi has merged with the part that is still part of the Kiyubi. Thus Naruto's third Kiyubi form I born. Why can't you just lie down? Madara demanded as he stabbed the back end of his fan towards Naruto. Naruto seemed to vanish in an orange blur and appear again out of nowhere. No, Naruto replied as he delivered a kick to Madara's sternum. Why can't you just leave us alone? He proceeded to hit him in the chin and send him flying. Naruto jumped up and grabbed Madara by the head. I'm tired of you, and everyone else who try to bring pain, misery, and death in a time where peace is needed. Naruto kept his grip on Madara as they fell, can't you see we're tired? Madara ran a hand through Naruto's chest, or at least tried to, but the orange blazing coat of chakra was too strong to penetrate. Instead he placed both hands on the hand Naruto was using to hold his head. You're a fool. Peace can only be forced. Madara said before he was slammed back first into the ground. An eruption of orange chakra covered and exploded around them burning and bringing back to life the area around. No, you can't force something like that. It's a lie. What we can hope for now is that one day people can understand each, and break away from the cycle that we call hate. Till then I'll help them understand. And, I'll start with you. 
Naruto only lifted Madara's head and slammed it down to the ground. The previous orange energy seemed to expand more until the ground was covered of orange energy. And when Madara was slammed to the ground the second time, his legs flew up at the same time the energy expanded and when the legs touched the floor, the energy exploded into flames. Naruto himself stood up unharmed, and allowed his coat of energy to disband. He just knew that it was finally over. 1. Why you may one Uzumaki, Madara whispered as his mask fell off. Madara was an old man, that was for sure, and he possessed the signature Uchiha look. But, he continued, I'm not going to just lose without having won nothing. It was then Naruto noticed the eye change on him. Instead of having two different eyes, they seemed to merge until it formed a fusion type of eye. Naruto tried to move but he couldn't. He fell down onto a knee. Naruto looked down at the ground then back towards Madara and caught him whisper, Die. It seemed as though he was being pushed back by an invincible force and was surprised when he felt distortion behind him. Naruto's eyes widened. He did a Shira Tensai and Kamui at the same time. He knew he was going to be torn apart if he entered that. Naruto did the only thing he could think of that revolved around him not being able to move. He gathered chakra. More specifically, he gathered the chakra he lost from the war as well as nature's chakra. But he wasn't fast enough. Right when he was sucked into the vortex of nothing, Naruto was able to activate his sage Q mode, but the energy just seemed to make it worse. The vortex changed into a deep greenish purple and then there was no more. The vortex just seemed to swallow Naruto up until there was nothing but a crater. Madara smiled. He may have lost the war, but he won the battle, and then, he passed away. The skies over the invisible island gifted to its inhabitants by the goddess Hera were eerily calm. It was hardly surprising given that only moments before the Aegean Sea Skyway had been turned into an aerial battleground for a three American fighter jets and a squadron of enemy planes. Anyone who had witnessed the fierce battle, even the elements of nature, would have given respectful pause as there had been no survivors on either side. However, as calm as the skies were the silence was fated not to last. Within the confines of the invisible barrier shielding the island from the world of man, the silent reverent skies were suddenly shattered as an enormous greenish-purple vortex was torn through the very fabric of reality with an immense boom, putting the mightiest crack of thunder to shame. All eyes within range of the resounding detonation looked to the skies to see the vortex swirling menacingly overhead. Among them, riding horseback through the island's woods as she had so many times before, was the Amazonian princess Diana, who upon quickly reaching a clearing was able to look to the skies in time to see the vortex spew a black something, that looked human from its swirling confines. Great Hera, she whispered in awe at the strange sight. It was then the vortex, having apparently serving its purpose, rapidly began to deteriorate before finally vanishing from sight altogether. With the vortex in the sky gone all eyes watching immediately shifted to the object plummeting to the earth. Flicking her horse's reins Diana and her steed quickly gave chase after the falling objects. Little did she realize that day the chaos that was about to be unleashed upon the Mischira, herself and her beloved sisters. His mind a scattered haze, Naruto Uzumaki tried gathering his wits as he turbulently fell from the sky. Disoriented by the sudden shift from night to day not to mention the unexpected skydive the teen war hero frantically took in his surroundings searching for any possible leverage he could use to break he fall. Only to notice the ground below was coming at him fast. Thinking quickly he surrounded himself with the last few remains of his chakra. In a shielding sphere of blue chakra just moments before crashing into the ground or more accurately the water, striking it with such force that the impact emptied all the water pooled at the waterfall's base sweeping away the women who had been bathing there in the ensuing tidal wave. As the waterfall began to quickly refill the small lagoon Naruto let out a wounded groan as he staggered to his feet to take in his surroundings. Immediately he arched a surprised brow as his gaze locked onto the several naked women rising to their feet as they returned his stare with their stunned gazes. Er, it's not what you think, Naruto said with a weak smile, he was still hurting all over and all he could do was flinch from all the murderous glares that were directed onto him. He took a step back only to fall on his ass, ouch, he said with closed eyes to force the pain behind his head. Who are you? One blonde naked woman asked menacingly. Naruto flinched again at her tone. It was a while since he has heard such hatred directed onto him. It was a surprise considering he just met them, er crash. 
My name is Naruto, he said, and I have no idea about what's going on. He laughed nervously and opened his eyes. Gah, can you all please put some clothes on? He closed his eyes and turned his head, only to wince a bit. The Amazons grew even angrier. How dare this male look at them with such perverse intentions? One of the ebony skinned one was about to attack when a brunette held her back. She looked back to look at her fellow sister, but all she got was a narrow stare that was directed onto the male. How did you get here, male? Naruto was about to answer when he felt something wrong deep inside of him. It felt like Kuruma's chakra when not captured but stronger. What, what is going on? He asked out loud and loud enough for them to hear. He fell to his knees in pain and felt the rage build inside of him. Jiget, he gasped out at them. Get away from me, he yelled out as red wisps came out of his body. I can't, err, he sank further into the ground by placing his hands down and bowed his head. He clutched his head and roared upward. Get away. The Amazons finally thought the male was going to attack them, and when he yelled instinct overtook them and they attacked in groups. Just as they stabbed, Naruto was forced onto his fourth tail, and his form was but flesh and blood. Skin was all but gone and in its place was a monster with nothing on its mind but rage. A-A-A-R-R-R-R-R-H-H. -A -A -R 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 -H. The blood-red monster blew them away with its roar and in just seemed to run north. The Amazons were just stupefied, but they remembered something as the beast fled. Hades, one of the sisters whispered in horror. The red head glared and her face hardened. She stood up and grabbed her weapon before sprinting after it. Artemis, wait. The red head stopped at the command of the approaching princess. Artemis what has happened here? Diana asked as she quickly dismounted from her mare to help her fellow sisters. Artemis' gaze turned and locked onto the path of destruction left in the attacker's wake. It would seem we have an unwanted intruder my princess, she replied. Quickly she handed her injured sister to another Amazon as she turned to her posse. One of you take the princess's mare and go to the queen, she instructed. Tell her to gather our sisters to defend Tartarus, I think whatever did this plans to free him. All eyes grew wide with fear before the nearest of them quickly sprang to her feet and mounted Diana's horse taking off in a full gallop to the palace. Come your highness, I fear the time has come for you to test your mettle in battle, she said taking hold of Diana's wrist and pulling the raven-haired princess from the injured to place sword in her hand. The rest of you tend to those who are wounded, then join us as quickly as possible. Firmly gripping the blade in hand Diana nodded compliantly as they quickly gave chase down the path of destruction the creature had left in its wake. As they ran down the newly cut path Diana couldn't help but nervously take note of the surrounding sights of freshly fallen tree trunks at the sides of the path, each had either been ripped out of the ground, burnt, or mightily slashed down by a single clawed swipe. Ahead an enraged bestial roar tore through the woods with intense fury, the likes of which an Amazon had not heard in centuries. Diana was an Amazon born and raised with nerves of tempered steel. Battle was in her blood and even though she had been trained to deal with all forms of enemy, despite this, she couldn't help but feel a pang of nervousness. Just what in Hera's name had been unleashed from the sky. Stealing her nerves she focused on the matter at hand, keeping it from reaching Tartarus and freeing the imprisoned god of the underworld. It didn't matter what it was they were facing, all that mattered was that soon it had to be stopped. Deep in his confines of Tartarus, Hades felt rage and power unlike any other. He has been biding his time to escape by hatching a plan of making one of man's world come here, but with this, he knows his escape can be once closer. He smiled evilly. Olympus, Zeus, and Hippolyta I will return sooner than what you all have expected. He licked his lips and laughed. The blood-red Kiyubi Ed Naruto slashed and tore through the trees on his path like a salvage beast. He let nothing in his way. He ran through like a locomotive but with more explosive power, and as he tore through more and more, he was hit from the back and knocked to the floor. The beast looked up, with his jaw hanging low and threatening, he roared again before attacking back at the one who attacked him. Diana dodged the blood-red beast of hell and sent a sicking punch to its stomach. She watched it fly to a near tree and slam into it. She bent down and resumed her stance. Like so, the beast brushed back into the scene with its claws extended. Ripping forward, the beast slashed at Diana and sent her rolling back onto her approaching sisters. Artemis glowered at the beast and flew at it without hesitation. As Diana watched Artemis battle the beast she couldn't but think of the situation. Great Hera, she thought. What kind of hell beast is this? 
She watched as Artemis was sent flying into three more of her sisters. She steeled her resolve and lunge. Four of her sisters followed her example and they fought. Diana deflected one of the claws that came her way and slashed back at it with her blade. It dug deep into the beast's chest but it did nothing to slow it down. The beast slammed her to the ground with three of its tails and flicked her aside with its fourth. It took hits from the other Amazons but like Diana, it did nothing. The beast smashed at them with brute strength and sent them crashing hard into separate trees. Diana recovered and decked the beast in its maw. The beast barely budged this time and slashed at her again. However, Artemis speared it and rolled with it until she kicked it off her, she quickly got to her feet and quickly ran to her princess's side. Are you okay? Princess? Yes, Artemis. I am. But, she paused as they watched the beast toss away another Amazon before sprinting away. Back to the direction of Tartarus. Back to her mother. We have to move, Diana said. Artemis nodded. Alexa glanced upwards to the broken treetops overhead as she cautiously ventured further into the woods. Like her sister and the princess, the red headed Amazonian scholar was also tracking the trail of an intruder. However, Unlike her sisters however her quarry was a bird of a much different feather. Like any other day before she had opted to find a quiet place to sit and read her books, this time choosing a quiet little meadow where she could be left in peace. She knew she should not be investigating alone but unable to deny her curiosity Alexa had left her books behind to venture into the woods in search of the strange craft, tracking the trail it had left behind during its fall. After several minutes she at last found what she had been searching for, in a manner of speaking. She found her sisters, several of them staggering to their feet. She gasped, and threw her books to the side to rush to their aid. Are you okay? She asked with concern. Her sister nodded. I am okay Alexa, but I do not think you should be here. You are not a warrior, and this beast is more formidable than anything we have ever faced. It batted us aside like nothing. Alexa held her tongue. She knew she had more to say. The beast even batted your sister, Artemis, and the princess Diana like ants while their attacks did nothing but anger the beast. Hera, she whispered. Where did it go, and Hera, where is my sister now? Is she okay? Blonde nodded. She has left with the princess to slay it. It's, it's heading towards the direction of our queen, to Tartarus, to Hade. Alexa breathed almost in shock. She was alive when Hades enslaved them with the help of Hercules and almost brought the Titans to Olympus. She was there. Hades is horrible. After a few seconds, Alexa breathed and turned to face her sisters. I may not be a warrior but I refuse to allow this beast free Hades. Come let us fight. They nodded and sprinted away. As not only an Amazon but Queen of the Amazons Queen Hippolyta had experienced more than her fair share of combat. And now as she stood at the vanguard before the army of her assembled sisters she knew this was a day she was about to see more. Inhaling deeply she steadied her nerves as she readied to address her sisters. My sisters, she began. I fear the day we have long dreaded is finally upon us. A servant of Hades has penetrated the barrier, as we speak it comes to unleash its master back onto man's world. From what I have been told I fear that it is unlike any foe we have ever faced, but hear me now my sisters. As surely as it is an Amazon's sworn duty to keep the plague of war from spreading to the outside world this enemy will fail in its quest. But hear me now as I say unto you, we shall not fail in our sworn duty, we shall not falter in even our darkest hour. We are Amazons, warriors born, warriors united, warriors strong and warriors true. No matter the foe, no matter the threat, we shall prevail. A mighty cheer have erupted from the assembled Amazon army. Wise words my queen, Persephone said over the din as she stood at Hippolyta's side. Thank you Persephone, she replied. I just pray that on this day they will be words of truth. You fear this may be one foe we cannot overcome my queen? The battle-scarred Amazon asked. Yes, was Hippolyta's sad reply as her thoughts momentarily drifted to what she had been told. Ask yourself this whenever before has any enemy ever been able to defeat over five Amazons single-handedly. Despite her secret delight at the prospect of Hades' freedom Persephone couldn't help but nervously gulp at the question posed by the Amazon queen. There have been none, she replied. Exactly, not even demigods like Hercules or Thrax was able to do so unarmed, said Hippolyta. It gives me pause to wonder what manner of foe we now face. 
Suddenly the Amazon's eager clamor for battle was suddenly overshadowed and silenced by tremendous roar. All eyes turned to the sky to see a blood-red six-foot-tall fox-like creature soaring out of the sky towards them, its five tails blasting the ground in doing so. Archers! Hippolyta shouted raising her hand, fire! Instantly the sky seemed to blacken as it was suddenly filled with arrows fired at the approaching beast. The beast gave a mighty roar and blasted the darkened sky back into light. The beast continued its momentum and seemed to shake off particles that floated in the air. The Amazons continued anyways. They reloaded and brought it back up. Archers! Hippolyta shouted once more. Fire! Just as the sky darkened once more, the beast opened its mouth and swallowed the particles back into its jaw. It bloated and without pause opened its mouth to allow the pure beam of power destroy everything as it moved towards the Amazonian army. It tore through them like butter and it continued until it stuck several parts of their city. It exploded into nothing but debris. Hippolyta had to shield her eyes as the light was blinding. When it subsided, Hippolyta gasped in pain. Great Hera! She whispered. She turned her attention back to the beast that was now littered with arrows all around it, and drew the sword Hera herself had given her. With rage she rushed at the beast. She vertically slashed at it with all her might but it blocked it with one of its tails. She was shocked. What kind of beast of such power could block this sword? The beast used her inchal shock to blast through her like a battering ram. It stuck high and hard with its clawed hand. It left two deep gashes on her face and it continued to hit her on her abdomen. She kicked out and rolled back to her feet. Beast! She exclaimed before resuming her attack. By then, her Amazon sisters have joined her in attacking. She joined with them, but was knocked aside when one of her sisters slammed hard into her. Hippolyta groaned as she struggled to her feet carefully pushing her unconscious sister lying slumped over her off her back as she slowly rose off the ground. Staring through the surrounding haze of upturned earth Hippolyta's eyes widened in horror. All around her sisters lay strewn about the battlefield unconscious, only a lucky few had managed to stave off the full brunt of the attack. Even now as she stared at the surrounding devastation, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. With a single strike the battlefield's once green and fertile land had been turned into an overturned wasteland reduced to a humongous crater as their army had been scattered to the winds with force the likes of which she had only ever seen as the end result of the god's wrath. However her shock was short-lived as her honed Amazonian battle instincts took hold of her senses. Eyes narrowing with focus and resolve, and her sword firmly still in hand the Amazonian queen staggered to her feet as her gaze instinctively began seeking out the creature that had done this. As the upheaved dust cloud began to clear and those of her Amazon sisters still conscious returned to their feet the queen dutiful eyes locked onto their attacker, sprinting from the crater's epicenter towards the god's distant prison. Opening her mouth she readied to sound the charge but was stopped short when she heard, sisters. The figure shouted over the weapon's fire, her voice surprisingly familiar, together. There was a brief pause among Hippolyta and the others as they watched Diana, Artemis, and the other approaching Amazons charged the beast, but then their battle instincts kicked into action and they let out a united battle cry and joined their sisters in the charge. Diana was the first to reach the monster. Mightily she swung her sword at the creature's neck, only for it to be intercepted and caught in the beast's teeth. With a mighty bite the raging red monster clamped down onto the sword with such force the steel blade, tempered by the expertly honed hands of the finest Amazonian sword smith, shattered in its maw-like glass. Instantly before the metal splinters could even touch the ground the Amazonian princess was then struck by an intensely powerful fist to the stomach, striking her with such force she was lifted off the ground sent flying into her charging sister Persephone knocking her and the scarred Amazon unconscious. Princess! shouted Artemis in horror, seeing her sister fall to the beast. With rage in her eyes that could match the beast's own she then locked her gaze on the raging creature as it brawled with what little remained of their sisters. You shall pay for that monster. With sword tightly clenched in hand, the red headed Amazon charged the beast. What followed was a furious, bloodthirsty orchestra of metal repeatedly clashing against red claws, as the two raging forces collided, never for even a second giving an inch. Sparks flew from her blade as the beast's claws crisscrossed into a pincer against the sword's edge, locking the two foes in the impasse of only an unstoppable force and an immovable object, both figures being the former and the latter. Artemis grunted as she pushed her blade against the claws as it did the same to her sword, 
Never before had her strength and prowess of a master warrior ever been so put to the test. She doubted a demigod such as Hercules or even the queen herself could provide her with such challenge in battle. As she stared down her snarling opponent, she couldn't help but smirk in spite of herself as she reveled in the experience. This was truly what it meant to be an Amazon. However, her revelry was suddenly cut short as their locked embrace was interrupted as it broke their clash to block the slashing attack of Queen Hippolyta's sword. Did you think you would have the pleasure of slaying this beast solely unto yourself? The queen asked a smirk gracing her lips as the duo slashed away at the creature in perfect synchronization only for their blows to be blocked by its claws. I would be lying to you my queen if I had not entertained the thought at least once, she replied as she blocked a counter attack from the creature. Whether it be by the strength of our legions or by my hand alone, there is not a doubt in my mind that this creature can be defeated. In spite of herself she laughed as their blades continued to clash against its claws. In truth though your highness I would be eager to see if it could be done by the latter. If there were not so much at stake I would be tempted let you to find out Artemis, Hippolyta replied as the creature narrowly dodged the edge of her blade before it retaliated with the narrowly avoided swipe of its claw. But as things stand I'm afraid you will just have to learn to share the glory. As you wish my queen, she replied as she slashed at the creature and the followed with a fierce kick which by some miracle slipped past the creature's defenses and collided into its chest knocking it backwards. Combining their talents the two master warriors ceaselessly rained strike after slashing strike at the creature as they combined their swordplay with as many physical blows as possible in an attempt to keep it off balance as they slowly pushed it back. As the two Amazons continued their onslaught on the beast both women couldn't help but be amazed at its tenacity as it countered and blocked every strike of the sword and every blow they delivered. This creature was a warrior in the truest sense, strong, merciless, unrelenting supremely skilled in the art of combat and more savage than any foe either of them had ever faced. As the battle between the duo and the monster raged on, the creature having had enough broke away from the duo as it leapt back arching high into before it came crashing back down to about ten feet from them. Landing claws first the creature's impact with the ground sent a huge shockwave bursting through the earth causing the two warriors to stumble and fall from massive tembler. Seeing its chance the fox-like monster leapt back up into the air, letting out a vicious roar as it came crashing onto his opponents and bringing its right elbow smashing into Artemis' back with a loud bone-snapping crunch. The red-headed Amazon's head snapped back in absolute pain as a choked cry of pain and blood splattered out from the inner recesses of her throat, before her head limply fell to the ground, either left dead or unconscious from the spine-shattering blow. Artemis! Alexa echoed as she arrived just in time to see her sister fall. With rage that rivaled if not surpassed the creature and with speed that nearing that of Hermes himself the armor-clad Alexa was suddenly standing before the creature, hoisting it up by its neck and delivering a powerful right hook into the creature's face so powerful that the impact shook the very air around them like a crack of thunder. As the force of the blow sent the creature rocketing upwards its ascent was suddenly halted by an enraged Alexa grabbing the beast by its ankles. With all her fury she mightily hurled the dazed creature back towards the epicenter of the crater. Then no sooner had the beast departed from her grasp, she leapt high with an enraged roar of her own and onto her prey before she began mightily pummeling its face. Die! 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 She screamed in fury, her reasonable thoughts replaced only with the heart-wrenching sight of her sister falling at the beast's hands. She continued to pound at face until she snapped out of her rage when she heard one of sisters yell, Artemis is alive. With the battle at last won Alexa got off the monstrous beast and stood up as what was left of their forces approached the crater's rim, among them was Princess Diana and Persephone. Quickly she aimed her weaponized arms down at the beast. On guard sisters. Alexa warned the remaining conscious Amazons as the flames the beast made continued to burn around them. Diana's eye grew wide with shock as tried to peer through the haze of flames and black smoke. Surely that creature still does not draw breath after that. Diana exclaimed in disbelief, having awakened in time to see Alexa's massive onslaught. Never underestimate your opponent my daughter, said the queen as she quickly joined them at the crater's edge with Artemis who had somehow managed to draw enough strength and stagger back to her feet. The severely injured redhead nodded as she gripped her sword in focused anticipation as they were joined by the rest of what little remained of their forces. Especially a servant of Hades my princess, she wheezed, not taking her eyes from the dissipating smoke for a second. The Amazons watched in horror once the smoke dissipated and the beast was up again, but
but this time it seemed bigger. It had a skeleton on top of its blood-red body and it was growling even harder. Hippolyta locked on to the beast and saw its new look at its bloated form. No, move, she yelled for she has seen it before. The Amazons moved just in time for a bigger beam to pass right through them and continue all the way down to the ocean. It obliterated everything on its path, and they could was stop and watch. Great Hera, Hippolyta heard her daughter, she couldn't agree more. The fox hell beast seemed like it was going to snap at them but suddenly it stopped moving, even when Diana reigned in her attacks despite her fatigue. The beast ignored them and took off again into the palace. Hippolyta watched and fell to her knees, she pushed herself and moved forward. Come my sisters, we will win, they ran next to her and to the beast. Kiyubi Ed Naruto stood in front of the large steel gates of Tartarus, he slammed into it with all six tails and blasted it with its chakra. It worked and opened. Hades heard the unlocking of his prison from the other side. He gleeful blasted the gates away and stood tall as he walked into the open gate. Hades' eyes immediately locked onto the beast that helped him escape his confine. I thank you strange beast, Hades said. He watched in amusement as two tails sprouted behind the thing. But, I'm afraid something as powerful as you will have to die. However, his smile turned down when the beast seemed to grow taller than him. The beast god thing lunged at Hades and the last thing Hades saw as he attempted to block was the open maw of the beast. Kiyubi Ed Naruto caught Hades' head in its jaw and brought it down viciously. Hades' body instantly fell to his knees and brought down with force. That was the sight the Amazonians saw as they entered. Hippolyta saw the death of Hades and open gates of Tartarus. She saw the beast next to Hades' headless body chewing on something. She turned and saw her daughter pale. She turned back, no choice. Tartarus is open. Hades is dead and the beast live. Come, we must not lose. It was then where something happened beyond her dreams. The beast seemed to recede from its gigantic form into a smaller person. Its skeleton and blood red coat slowly diminished back into its skin until the beast transformed into a man. A young, very burnt youth of a child. I lost, to that? She heard Artemis say. A child? She snared. It was a blow to her pride. Hippolyta and Diana were the first to move from their shock into the sleeping youth's body. What should we do mother? Diana asked her mother worried. Hippolyta did not smile at her. She had rage in her eyes as she turned to her sister. Sisters, her voice boomed. See here. A man has caused such destruction. What say ye? Kill him. Was their overall decision. Hippolyta nodded and pulled her sword forward and struck down. She was stopped when a light barrier got in between her and him. She looked upward and saw an approaching figure. Stop, ordered a voice, a male voice. Amazonians there immediately turned to see a kimono-clad old man. Who are you? demanded Artemis as she redrew her dagger leapt towards him. However her rapid dive for the visiting time walker was instantly cut short as as the redhead Amazon suddenly froze in midair suspended in mid-leap unable to move. Yield now Artemis, a calming voice instructed as an excessively tall female figure. Glowing with such blinding radiance it was all but impossible to look directly at her. Suddenly appeared beside the professor. It will do you all well to heed this man and listen to his words. Upon seeing the goddess all the women present immediately dove to the ground kneeling before the goddess who had bestowed them with their island sanctuary. As Artemis was released from her suspension she quickly sheathed her dagger and followed in her sister's example. Please forgive me Hera, she requested. I did not. You forgiveness is not necessary Artemis, Hera interrupted as she motioned the Amazons to rise. Your actions were those out of duty. Thank you my goddess, Artemis quickly said gratefully. Hera turned to her attention to the unconscious blonde teen. So this is the youth who killed my brother-in-law. She smiled in amusement as the figure groaned and scratched his whiskered face before zzing away. You are right Kami. He is funny. Kami, the old man, laughed in a way that the Amazonians knew only Zeus could do. Right. It seems the troubles he gets are even more hilarious. Hera chuckled. Indeed, I have watched what you have shown, and he shows great qualities, for a man. Kami chuckled before turning his attention to Hippolyta. Now, before I explain what had happened, I would first explain how. You see, he traveled dimensions, something no mortal has been able to do. 
It was fascinating that it happened when one of his foes sent him here by complete accident. Now, what made Naruto here turn into a beast was the influence of Hades' hate and the hate that really surrounds this island. You see, Naruto had a demon sealed into to him as a newborn. Only this beast feeds on the negative of all things. Emotions is the most common. Anyways, despite conquering the beast inside, he was too tired to even fight back when the possession took over. Thus, you have what you all faced. Despite this, I'm afraid, Naruto has to answer to the destruction he'd left. However, I will not be the one to make the punishment. Hera, if you please. Here smiled and Kami took that as his cue to leave. Hera turned to the unconscious teen. As punishment for the slaying of Hades, the gods of Olympus have decreed that you shall take his place as the Amazon's prisoner. She extended her hand towards him as a beam of white light surged out from her palm and engulfed him in its white light. When the light finally dissipated Hera once again spoke. Naruto Uzumaki, like the Amazons who stand before you you are now protected from the ravages of time so that you may fully live out Hades' sentence. Hera turns to Hippolyta. I'm afraid though if he wishes, he will be able to fight for his freedom a simple execution will not happen. Some persuasion from Kami. The gods are willing to give him one chance at freedom, she replied to everyone's surprise. Hippolyta, you will hold a tournament, whenever he wishes his freedom in which Naruto Uzumaki shall face four opponents which will Persephone, your daughter, Artemis, and should he survive, yourself. The victor of this contest will decide this boy's fate. Hearing and obeying, Hippolyta bowed her head, yes Hera, she replied. And with that the queen of the Olympian gods disappeared in bright flash of radiant light. There a long pause of awkward silence as all eyes fell on the unconscious blonde hair boy. Hippolyta sighed and looked back at the destruction caused. Lock him up. Come to me when he awakens. For now, we have to rebuild. Karama walked towards his fallen prisoner. He's been asleep for so long, that he'd forgotten how long exactly his prisoner. Friend has been there as well. He almost wished this didn't happen. But what does it matter? It appears like Naruto got himself into something that he doubts he will be able to get out of. Karama laid down next to the boy. Only thing was that Naruto is considered a man now considering the years that passed. Or seconds. He didn't know really. He almost snared at how much chakra he had to recover, for himself and his friend. They were both empty and almost to no energy filtered into their prison. Tartarus is hell. In the end he sighed. There was nothing he could do in this situation except wait and hope his friend recovered. But he almost doubted it. It's been so. Long. Karama smiled grimly, almost to the point that his teeth exposed rather highly. Please wake up Naruto, he said thoughtfully, I don't want to be alone anymore. Hippolyta glanced at the restored city of the Amazons, she was proud of how fast her sisters were able to fix things, but she was a bit more bitter considering only one creature did so much damage. She clenched her fists at her side and briskly walked back into her chambers. Though she was happy the beast man had not contacted her from Tartarus, she was more than looking forward to cutting off his head for what he'd done. She ignored Persephone as she walked, and made her way to her chambers. Wait, my queen, Persephone called out once more, but was ignored. The doors slammed shut and all she could do was look at the unmoving stone door ahead. Having troubles with mother? Diana asked from behind her. Persephone turned immediately, and ignored the pounding of her heart. Princess, don't scare me like that, I almost attacked you. She steadied herself and looked away from Diana's half-amused and concerned face. Yes, I will remember that. However, I'm still wondering what to do about mother. She seems more distracted than I have ever seen her. Persephone shot Diana a look and sighed. I've seen that look your mother's face before, Diana. It was when Hercules and Hades came. It, it was where their punishment lied that made her take such form. Diana nodded. Even thought she wasn't born when the Mischira was invaded by men, she had heard stories of the atrocities that were committed. But, even with stories she couldn't help but wonder now beyond her paradise to man's world. It will take some time princess, we must be patient with our queen. Persephone gave Diana a quick hug and left her presence. Diana was quick to follow behind. However, as soon as they left, Artemis rounded up the corner with her sister, Alexa close behind. Artemis still had a spitting scowl since that day of battle, and there was nothing to satisfy her except the spilling of the beast man's blood. 
Diana understood her sister's plight, for she was trampled by whatever that beast was as well. She nodded to her fellow Amazonian sister before Artemis focused her attention towards Persephone. Where is Pilipus? I must speak to her. Persephone shrugged, and blew a strand of her brown hair out of her face. I do not know where she is. Perhaps she's supervising the training of our forces. She was a little bit peeved when most of the our sisters returned beaten. Still, she was surprised no one was lost that day. Artemis grunted but then nodded in thanks. She turned her head and focused on Diana. How are you doing princess? I am fine Artemis, how are you? Stressed. I'm itching for a fight. Training just doesn't work as well as it used to. Then how about I fight with you? Artemis smiled a bit like a predator. That's fine, but I shall not take it easy on you. Diana smiled, too. That's fine. I shall meet you at the arena. Let me prepare first. Artemis nodded and Diana walked off. Alexa placed a hand of her sister's shoulder. Are you okay? Artemis nodded. I'm fine sister. She walked off without a word after. With unbridled ferocity Artemis leapt towards her opponent, slashing her weapon at their head, only to have it blocked by her opponent. Without hesitation she dove to the ground, instantly sweeping her opponent's feet out from under them knocking them onto her backside. However her opponent swiftly sprang back to their feet as they brought their fist slamming into her stomach. Artemis grunted with rage as she defensively faltered backward, waiting for the breath that had just been knocked from her lungs to return. No, she thought in pure rage. She would not lose this time, she absolutely refused to. With speed that may have just rivaled that of the messenger god Hermes, Artemis struck back, slashing tirelessly with her sword, not giving her opponent so much as an inch to retaliate. With one final slash of her sword her opponent's sword was shattered into splinters and rendered useless. Instantly she mightily delivered the sole of her foot into the solar plexus of her foe, sending them reeling backward and crashing to the ground. As her opponent moved to get back on their feet they were stopped short as the tip of the red-haired warrior's blade was pressed against their throat as Artemis stood over them in absolute triumph. With rage in her eyes Artemis pressed the edge of her weapon against her horrified foe's throat as she leaned in to speak her departing words into their ear. This time, she said in a dark and merciless tone, I win. And with that she dealt the final strike, ensuring her victory. As Artemis rose from her fallen opponent Diana among many others stared up at the red-haired woman in sheer disbelief. She had never seen her sister fight with such ferocious intensity before. How could she? She began, perplexed. As an Amazon warrior Diana you should know how it feels to lose in battle and live with that shame, Hippolyta said. An Amazon's pride as a warrior is one of our most sacred treasures, to lose that in battle drives only is to become stronger so that it may one day be restored. Diana shook her head as she sat up from the ground rubbing the top of her head, nursing the final blow her sister had delivered with the flat of the wooden sword. Yes but it was that boy who defeated us, not me, she grimly chuckled, still somewhat stunned by her defeat. Hippolyta chuckled as she helped pull her daughter back to her feet. You seem to forget all the defeats you have handed her over the centuries, Hippolyta said with wry smirk. Nor the gloating you often chose to revel in after. Diana glanced at what remained of the mock blade she still gripped in her hand, but those were just sparring matches mother, Diana pointed out. The queen nodded. Exactly, she replied. To lose in sparring is one thing but for a proud Amazon warrior to lose in actual battle, to a child no less is another matter entirely, and considering that you are the latter in Artemis' eyes you can naturally understand the frustration she often feels after your matches, even though it be just sparring. Knowing she was right Diana nodded. Mother about that boy, I'm not sure if I feel right about him, she said nervously. I too would dearly like to pay him back for the defeat he handed us, but I feel hesitant about it. That is, if he ever tries to free himself from Tartarus. Hippolyta eyed her daughter nervously, not sure if she liked where this was going. How do you mean daughter? She asked, hoping her daughter would better explain herself. Despite his actions what he did was not under his own power, she stated. Even though he attacked us he was under Hades' influence. From what I have seen he did not seem to bear any ill will towards us. In fact during our first encounter he seemed to be fighting Hades' influence. The firsts who found him said so themselves. Having feared that her daughter might have become somewhat enamored by the boy, being the first man she had ever met, Hippolyta inwardly gave a relieved sigh, 
now knowing it was merely Diana's conscience her daughter was struggling with. Diana, men are deceivers who hold nothing but rage and treachery in their hearts, pure and simple, she stated assuredly. True, some may seem to have good in their hearts but it is always to further their own agenda. No matter what you have seen from this boy you have also seen the side of his true self embodied in that monster. While it may have appeared that he was struggling for control of his actions, I have no doubt in my mind it was likely a mere attempt to distract you and Artemis. Knowing the history her people bore Diana could only sigh and nod to her mother, albeit with reluctance as the image of the monster's pained face as it held itself back from finishing them still lingered in her mind. I see you still have your doubts, Hippolyta observed, noticing her daughter's expression. She sighed and shook her head. Sometimes I fear living such a sheltered life from the outside world has perhaps made you too trusting. Is that so wrong mother? Diana asked. Hippolyta shook her head as she smiled proudly at her daughter. There is hardly anything wrong with having a trusting heart Diana, she replied. It is perhaps your greatest strength, and something that fills me with great pride as your mother, even if it does give me worry in moments such as these. Diana couldn't help but smirk. And all this time I thought my greatest strengths were the gifts the gods gave me when you made me mother, she chuckled. Those two, replied Hippolyta with a chuckle before she grew more serious, but you must realize Diana trust in a stranger is something that must be earned, especially from a man. Just remember Diana the line between trust and foolhardy naivete can sometimes be an elusive one, the wise often choose to locate it first and foremost. Again Diana nodded. I know you're right, I just can't help but have questions about this boy, she replied. I assume what you are leading to is your desire to personally further interrogate our new prisoner, her mother assumed. Well if I am to fight him tomorrow I do feel it best that I learn as much as can be provided, Diana replied. And didn't you once tell me, know thyself, know thy enemy and you will hold the key to victory. Hippolyta couldn't help but arch an eyebrow. First of all my daughter, just what makes you think that you will even have the opportunity? She replied. Persephone is to fight him before you and since our first battle with the boy I have noticed an especially vengeful glint in her restored eyes. I have my suspicions she intends to reclaim her pride as a warrior well before you can be given the opportunity, and from what I've seen of that boy's physique I doubt he's much of a match against one of our fiercest warriors. She then added with a mixed tone of curiosity and coy suspicion towards her daughter. And secondly, just whenever did I give you such sage words of wisdom? In truth her mother had never said anything of the sort. Diana had just come up with the adage on the spot hoping it would support her desire to interrogate the boy, and maybe learn more about where he came from. I believe it was when I was a child mother, she bluffed. Sincerely doubting that Hippolyta couldn't help but suppress the tiniest smirk from forming on her lips, as queen of the Amazons not to mention her daughter's mother she knew perfectly well when someone was trying to deceive her, much less her daughter who, despite the many things she excelled in, was less than masterful in the art of lying. Nevertheless she couldn't see the harm in humoring her daughter's desire to retrieve more information about the boy. Well regardless I suppose it couldn't hurt to learn more from him, she continued. For the gods to actually be persuaded into sparing him after he beheaded one of their own, there is likely more to him than meets the eye. Something you should be weary of if he should actually succeed in defeating Persephone. Diana nodded. Mother that is something I have been wondering. Why exactly do you think the gods wish for Artemis to be the boy's opponent after me? She asked, the question having been weighing on her mind since Hera had spoken their words. As you said I have beaten Artemis many times in combat, so shouldn't she be the second to battle if Persephone is defeated? Once again Diana I remind you those were merely sparring matches, Hippolyta replied. While it is true you have beaten Artemis she has the advantage of experience over you. Had your matches with Artemis been actual battle it is possible you might have found yourself humbled on more than one occasion. Diana arched an eyebrow at this. Are you saying that Artemis has been letting me win mother? The queen shook her head. Of course not Diana, she replied. As I have often told you actual war is a different breed of battle. In it you abandon all restraint you have and rely solely on your Amazon training and instinct. It is something that I pray you never have to experience for yourself. There was a brief pause from Diana as her mother's words set in. While she knew herself to be a far better warrior than Artemis, having been blessed by the gods themselves, she also knew the truth in her mother's words. It was a fact that obviously the gods had taken into account in their selection of the boy's opponents. So then I may borrow the lasso mother, Diana at last said, 
breaking the silence between them as she returned to the original subject. Noting the glint of excitement in her daughter's eye Hippolyta chuckled and nodded. Yes do, she replied. Personally I would rest easier tonight if I knew just what manner of evil our new prisoner was capable of. Mother must you call that boy evil? Diana asked. He seemed to be many things, but I don't think evil was among them. Secretly Hippolyta couldn't help but realize the boy wasn't evil. Still, she more than anyone knew just how deceptive and treacherous the likes of men could be, and as such when it came to the likes of mankind it was better to err on the side of caution. Diana you have been fortunate enough to have never encountered a man in your life, she sighed, understanding what her daughter must have been thinking, and I wish to Hera that that were still the case, but sadly it seems that the fates had other plans in store. Just heed me when I tell that you must never drop your guard around them, no matter how innocent they may seem. Wise words indeed my queen, agreed a new voice. Both Diana and Hippolyta flinched on instinct as they turned to face the newcomer. Hippolyta couldn't help but smile a wry smirk at Philippus, general of the Themyscirian army. General must you always be such a creature of stealth? The Amazonian queen inquired with a chuckle. I swear only Hermes himself is lighter of foot. The tall raven-haired ebony-skinned woman returned the queen's smile as she nodded. Forgive me my queen, but as they say old habits die hard, she replied with a chuckle. As she immediately shook the start the woman's sudden appearance had given her, Diana couldn't help but arch an eyebrow at the woman as a smirk of her own formed on her lips. That, and the pleasure you always seem to find in startling me whenever the opportunity arises Philippus, Diana noted. Merely a good-natured effort in always making sure your wits about you my princess, Philippus replied with a slight smile. The fact that it is one of the few joys I prefer to indulge myself in is simply mere coincidence. And the fact that in this instance you succeeded in doing the same to your queen is also mere coincidence, albeit a pleasant one, Hippolyta couldn't help but observed with a chuckle. Precisely my queen, she replied, hiding her delight on that fact from her features as best she could. Frivolities aside Philippus, I take it you've come to us on a matter of great importance for you to leave your post at our new prisoner's cell, Hippolyta observed, her humored features shifting to becoming more serious. Philippus' smile diminished as her expression became more solemn as she nodded. Has something happened to the prisoner? Diana asked concerned. No my princess, she replied shaking her head, he remains in his prison, however, I found something of great importance. Then what urgency did you bring? Hippolyta asked. Philippus produced a frog-shaped purse, a big scroll from her back, she handed both items to Hippolyta. As soon as she got them, she opened the purse and searched its contents. Where did you find this? Hippolyta asked as she rummaged. Inside she found just a few coins and just three pictures. Pictures? Hippolyta questioned out loud. As soon as she said that, it attracted Diana's attention. Hippolyta realized this and handed the pictures to ease Diana's curiosity. She already knew of her daughter's fascination of man's world, and sometimes she cursed the gods for bestowing her such curiosity. Philippus stepped forward. I was curious about where this man first landed. I investigated, and found these close by. She stepped back and allowed Diana to move closer to her mother. May I see these pictures mother? Why? Hippolyta asked. Diana gazed back at her mother with a bit of hesitation. I, I just want to know what kind of man he is. And. She trailed off. She flushed just a bit. She found her explanation weak and unjust something not fit for an amazon princess especially for a warrior of her caliber you know mother know thy enemy for ye know thyself she finished it was a surprise however when her mother nodded at her with a small smile she handed her daughter the pictures and turned her head to philippus it's a shame you didn't try to investigate this matter early on why now i wonder philippus smiled i couldn't really abandon my post my queen we were as disarray most of our city was destroyed. I had to boast moral, my queen. Philippus turned her head to look at the princess who was looking at the pictures in fascination. An amused smile crossed her face. Hippolyta nodded to herself though. She understood, almost lost in her. However, it didn't add up, she thought. Why hadn't any of her sisters found these items before? She frowned. She felt something twist in her gut, and she didn't like it. Her warrior instincts were screaming at her. Something was coming. But where and when? Karama, 
The nine-tailed demon fox almost jerked to attention when he finally felt movement from his blonde prisoner. Eyes wide, he turned his attention downward and saw Naruto open his eyes with a gasp. Naruto was turning his head around in wonder, seemingly confused, before he realized something was wrong and saw Kurama there right with him. Kurama? Naruto asked with the familiar confused expression on his face, where am I? He stood up, it doesn't look like I'm in the seal. Kurama, just a bit overwhelmed, rested his head back down and spoke, you've been asleep for a while Naruto. I've lost count exactly. And, to tell you the truth this feels like your mind but at the same time it does not. Naruto just tilted his head in further confusion. It was dark in here Naruto. The only thing I felt was cold, empty loneliness. I don't know where you were, but I was alone. I'm glad you're back. It amazed Naruto that he could hear the sincerity in his friend's voice, however, he frowned. With what his friend said was truth, where were they? It was not dark or cold. It actually felt warm, and the light he was seeing. He gave a reassuring smile at Kurama. I'm sorry, Kurama. I know how you feel. I wish I could have been there to guild you, but now. He trailed off. I promise to never leave you in the dark by yourself again, believe it. Kurama chuckled. I have forgotten your way for a second Naruto Uzumaki. It, it is good to see you again. Kurama looked around, and he saw things as if he saw them for the first time. It seems you have changed things already. Naruto laughed. See, he stopped a few seconds later. Anyways, since you don't know where we, and obviously I've been asleep for a while, let's find out where we are. The last thing I remember was. He scratched his head. I don't remember, except. Why you may one Uzumaki, Madara whispered as his mask fell off. Madara was an old man, that was for sure, and he possessed the signature Uchiha look. But, he continued, I'm not going to just lose without having won nothing. It was then Naruto noticed the eye change on him. Instead of having two different eyes, they seemed to merge until it formed a fusion type of eye. Naruto tried to move but he couldn't. He fell down onto a knee. Naruto looked down at the ground then back towards Madara and caught him whisper, die. It seemed as though he was being pushed back by an invincible force and was surprised when he felt distortion behind him. Naruto's eyes widened. He did a Shira Tensai and Kamui at the same time. He knew he was going to be torn apart if he entered that. Naruto did the only thing he could think of that revolved around him not being able to move. He gathered chakra. More specifically, he gathered the chakra he lost from the war as well as nature's chakra. But he wasn't fast enough. Right when he was sucked into the vortex of nothing, Naruto was able to activate his sage Q mode, but the energy just seemed to make it worse. The vortex changed into a deep greenish purple and then there was no more. The vortex just seemed to swallow Naruto up until there was nothing but a crater. Do you think Madara's jutsu transported us here? Wherever here is? Naruto asked. Kurama shrugged. I don't know, if so, it does not explain why I am outside. Naruto punched his fist into his other hand in realization. And then he slouched. I don't understand either. He scratched his head. Well, no use in standing around here like idiots. Come on, let's explore. Kurama watched Naruto run off. He gave out a sigh before a small smile appeared again. Just a few minutes out, and he's already causing me trouble. It seems your poster child has awakened, Kami, Hera said with an amused smile on her face. Around her was Zeus, her husband, and Poseidon. Kami himself sat on the other side. Finally, I say. It's almost been five dozen years since he awoke, Poseidon murmured loud enough for them to hear. Kami chuckled. Zeus however, ignored his wife and brother. He simply gazed at Kami with a piecing stare. Are you sure this child would be able to accomplish what you have said Kami? Kami sighed. Zeus was too serious for his own good, especially if it concerned Olympus. Yes, I promise he'll be able. He's a man of change. Believe in that. Zeus looked a bit more deeper before he glanced at the screen below. Hera glanced at her husband and knew the signs too well. For us all, I hope you were right. Kami smiled before standing up and vanishing. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.